Stop eating him, Santa Claus, please. In the summer of 5500, four brave explorers, Santa Claus, McCready, Childs, and Svetlana, set off for the frigid north to establish a communication base for the Zatar Alliance. Now, just two weeks into the expedition, and things are going well. Well, for now. Mission Log, starting on the 13th of Jugast, 5500. With the new base completed other than a few interior walls, I've decided to get started on food. We've had little luck with wildlife on this frozen land, so I think we'll try to grow something indoors. We brought along a few sun lamps, and the mountains are full of steel. Unfortunately, none of us are fully trained in growing, so we'll have to all pitch in. I wonder if one of Child's books could help. Because of the sun lamps' increased stress on the power system, Svetlana recommended adding another geothermal generator. I was wary at first, but since we've received no attacks from rival groups, I don't mind building another one further away. Instead of using up our time making stone blocks, I've decided to deconstruct the abandoned buildings around the base for materials. It's quicker and more efficient, and we don't have to use up our storage space in the meantime. More traders have found their way to us. I'm convinced they're lost, but their leader tells me that they heard from Green about our victory over the mechanoids, and were hoping we might have more to sell. I told him we didn't have very much left, but sent him away with a few sculptures and other items we didn't need. Unfortunately, he only had money. What we really need is food. Perhaps the next caravan will be better stocked. Work, work, work. McCready made an excellent sandstone sculpture that's really boosting morale, at least until we sell it. Meanwhile, we set up a new kitchen area in the old rooms, and the cooler is almost finished. Here's hoping we have enough food to fill it. Finally, we added more hydroponics to the growing area. Letter to Diana Nord on the 1st of September, 5500. My dearest mother, the most wonderful thing has happened on our expedition. Keith David, or Childs as we call him, has proposed. We have grown very close over our time together in the North Pole. I cannot wait for you to meet him when this expedition is over. Love, Svetlana. On the snow flats of the reindeer ice sheet, the wildlife is extremely scarce. Other than the occasional snow rabbit, the only real animal and threat on the ice sheet is the polar bear. And unbeknownst to the expedition, one wandered towards the base and, well, while Svetlana was idly working, that bear hunted. Santa Claus's mission log continues. Svetlana has been shot. A polar bear came around the side of the base, roaring and rushing towards Svetlana. McCready, Childs, and I took up arms and assaulted the beast. Svetlana fell. We assumed the beast got her, and we again rushed forward to take it down. After killing it, we moved her to the medical room, and upon inspection found a stray bullet from McCready's rifle. It had pierced her left leg. He has not stopped apologizing. While Svetlana is resting, we finish off the kitchen area adding the final touches of coolers and doors. Although, in this cold, I'm sure we won't need to use them. Deconstruction starts on the old wooden hut we built when we first arrived. It's sad to see it go, but I'm excited to have all that wood back for fuel and construction. Speaking of construction, I ordered a new storage room carved out of the mountain. Easier to find warmth in the earth, and we can use anything we dig up for more protection. While the men work and Svetlana rests, I start surveying the abandoned ruins around the base deconstructing what we can use. If I could go back to command and start this whole journey over again, I would have requested another explorer who knew hydroponics. In a word, we suck. More than half of our growth was lost due to botched harvesting. I don't want to put anyone on edge, but we may not last the winter. I'm so hungry. I'm all alone. I haven't eaten in days, weeks. I can't even remember the taste of food. Our supply ran dry and I can't even remember what happened. 
Sometimes I lose hours just sitting. I wake up and it's days from my last memory. It's starting to come back. It's all coming back. Childs collapsed. That day it was so cold. And I was still so hungry. We were chatting by the hydroponics basin trying to harvest some scrap of rice to eat and he just collapsed. I brought him to his bed. We were trying to get food. Hoping for food. Next it's more of a blur, but Childs died. I'm not sure when, but I've put together what happened since then. When Childs died, Svetlana went to his room and seized him. Then she ate his head at the table. At the time, I couldn't imagine the amount of hunger that makes you eat another person, but I'd soon discover. After this, she fed the scraps to a barely conscious MacReady who had collapsed the night before. When I awoke, I found meat by his bed and assumed someone had slain a polar bear. It sounds like I'm horrified at what I did, but I'm not. Even after giggling, Svetlana told me it was child's gift to us. I kept eating. With the new meat, I tried to keep the others alive. MacReady woke up in time to help Svetlana when she collapsed. She was barely conscious. The event expelled MacReady's last energy and he passed away. Thinking about it more clearly, I'm horrified at what I did. I've passed the barrier on cannibalism just fine, but a dear friend like him did not deserve this. I ate his head first. There was a raid yesterday. I ate him as well. It's easier when you don't know them. I spent the morning burying what is left of MacReady and Svetlana. Childs is long digested. I see a man on the horizon. Wish me luck. You caught me pretending to take a poop. If you liked our video, you should like, comment, and subscribe on it. That way, YouTube knows we're awesome. Do it. I gotta wipe.